What's up everyone, it's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor and today wanted to do a video talking about plant growth regulators. In this video, I want to cover the topics, what are they, what do they do, what other benefits do PGRs have, how do you apply it, and what are the risks that come with deciding to make these applications. Plant growth regulators work on specific pathways in the plant that affect cell division or gibberellic acid production or cell elongation. Depending on the formulation and the active ingredient, PGRs may be absorbed by either leaves through foliar applications or by roots. Specifically, plant growth regulators are unique in the sense that they slow or reduce top growth of plants, which leads to an influx of chlorophyll in a smaller surface area. This will contribute to darker turf with lower maintenance requirements. Today's video, I'm covering specifically Class A and Class B gibberellin biosynthesis inhibitors. Gibberellin and gibberellic acid is the hormone in the plant that promotes vertical upright growth. Class A gibberellin biosynthesis inhibitors like Trinaxipac ethyl, also known as Primo, or TNEX, is probably the most popular plant growth regulator. It can be applied across a wide variety of turf types and can influence many factors of plant growth. TNEX, Primo, Trinpac, Trinaxipac ethyl can actually be applied across all turf types safely. I'm going to put up this study here and show you exactly the influence that TNEX or Primo or Trinpac had on cool season grasses. For perennial ryegrass, we see the most significant growth suppression lasts somewhere between 21 to 28 days. However, with Kentucky bluegrass and tall fescue, that residual lasts a little longer, extending 35 to even 42 days. At the rates provided in this trial, we see there was no injury that occurred on any of the tested turf species. And also, as identified in this study, multiple applications perform better than single applications. We see tall fescue saw growth reduction as high as 33% while Kentucky bluegrass even higher with reduction as high as 40%. Class B gibberellin biosynthesis inhibitors like paclobutrazol are arguably the longest lasting preventative growth regulators. It is taken into the plant and absorbed via the root system. Therefore, it is a requirement that this product is watered in. TNEX, being a foliarly applied product, does not require being watered in. Paclobutrazol is applicable to a wide variety of turf types. However, there are limitations. It is specifically recommended to be kept off of the following turf types. Bahia grass centipede, and zoysia grass. Being soil absorbed and due to its active ingredient, it can reduce growth for up to eight weeks. And one of the more popular things and ways that paclobutrazol is used for is to extend the length of suppression from Trinaxipac ethyl. Using them in combination, the paclobutrazol allows for a slight soil residual, which will ultimately extend that period of regulation. Yeah. 
The most obvious benefits of a PGR is obviously the growth suppression, which can come into handy if you're traveling or you have to have a very aggressive fertilization program for a grow-in, for instance. However, there are also unseen benefits and relatively unknown benefits that can be as equally great. For instance, we will look here. PGRs can have a direct influence on disease pressure. PGRs can also reduce stress symptoms and potentially even reduce water requirements. If we look at the influence plant growth regulators had over the development of dollar spot as compared to the control, we can see that a fungicide application plus plant growth regulators outperformed just fungicide in dollar spot trials. Meaning applications of fungicide plus a PGR contributed to lower outbreaks of dollar spot when compared to fungicide alone or an untreated control. PGRs also affect plant stress levels by mitigating abiotic stress. According to the same study, the results showed that plants treated with PGR perform significantly better under drought condition through enhanced leaf relative water content, the amount of water in the leaf, greater biomass of shoot and root, higher FV to FM ratios, which specifically deal with the efficiency of photosynthesis, and a higher accumulation of protein, sugar, and phenolic compounds, or the BRICS content of the leaf. One of the more tricky things that probably steer people away from using PGRs more regularly is how do you effectively apply it? Being that it's either foliarly or root absorbed, it must be applied as a liquid. But the timing of your PGR applications is a little more sensitive. If you've ever heard the term growing degree days and been overwhelmingly confused, don't worry, everyone is. But the use of growing degree days in timing PGR applications is crucial and critical for success. Trinaxipac ethyl typically has a reapplication interval of 200 growing degree days. Meanwhile, the longer lasting, more residual paclobutrazole has a reapplication interval of 300 growing degree days. There's multiple different ways to calculate and track growing degree days. However, the easiest way to manage that is probably to use an application like Greenkeeper. Greenkeeper requires a little bit of setup. You have to input the different products you use. However, the app will keep track of weather patterns and offer alerts on reapplication intervals specific to the active ingredient of the PGR you use. Even more than that, the app also offers record keeping when it comes to fertilizer applications. The app in general is highly specialized. It's a very powerful tool for those looking to manage turf at a higher level. The next way would be to use a spreadsheet, like the one designed by University of Nebraska. You can find the link in the comment below. The program does not track weather patterns automatically, but with a little programming skills and some knowledge of APIs, you can get the spreadsheet to do that. Otherwise, you can manually enter your high and low temperatures for each day, and based on the product you selected as applied, it will tell you when to reapply. Both tools are very powerful, and they both offer more than just tracking growing degree days once you get into the nuts and bolts of it. As with any product, especially any turf applied product, remember, the label is the law. There are also inherent risks that come with each of these products. Specifically with PGRs, I'll group them into a few categories. Number one, over application. Over applying PGRs, whether in rate or in frequency, can lead to a bronzing of the turf grass. They refer to this if 
applications are made too frequently as overregulation, or just simply bronzing if you apply too high of a rate. What happens is because the growth has been regulated, you have slowed the top growth. Any damage that occurs either through overregulation or overapplication will take an exceptionally long time for the turf grass to recover because ultimately the damage has to grow out. Disease. If you apply a PGR to a lawn that may encounter disease, remember, even if you apply a fungicide, it will take the lawn an extremely long time to recover because the disease area must grow out and the turf has been regulated to not grow as aggressively, that means it will take a longer time for any damage to grow out. One way to combat this may be to apply both a PGR and a fungicide at the same time if your disease pressure warrants such a combination application. The same would apply to insect damage. Much like disease control, if entering a period of high insect pressure, prevention may also be necessary. Tank mixing with a fungicide and an insecticide is perfectly acceptable with the majority of these preventative growth regulator products. But you have to take into account the different variables you're going to encounter through your period of regulation and plan for it accordingly. Failure to do so will leave you with a lawn that is regulated with damage and will take a good portion of your growing season to recover. Remember, any product applied to a lawn comes with risk. You have to read, understand the label, and take into account all possible outcomes. Only you can make the determination if the risk you will encounter will satisfy the goals of your lawn. Thank you everybody for watching this video today. I hope you learned something and especially if you manage real low turf or are looking to take your turf management to the next level, you consider using a preventative growth regulator. Again, I can't stress enough the risks that come along with it. Otherwise, you have to make a calculated decision whether or not this product is right for you. Thank you everybody for watching today. Please hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment down below and tell me how you like this video. Thank you so much. Take care.